Kalimara, Akapavara, Vavarek. No, too difficult in Greek. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. Now, it's great to be back after a couple of weeks away. So, what have I got for you, lovely lot, today? Recently, I introduced my series Around the World in Watercolour, and I had loads of you requesting a scene from the beautiful island of Santorini in Greece. So, we're going to be having a go at painting this lovely line and wash, but you could paint this as a conventional watercolour if you didn't want to do the line work. So, come and join me, and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so here is the beautiful reference photo which I got from Pixabay. Thank you very much. So here is today's project which is fairly detailed and controlled, but I also practiced first with a much looser sketchy version painted on some hot press paper, which was great fun. And I probably prefer this one, but I didn't film it, so I can't show it to you. Today's materials. My paper is some Bockingford cold press. It's 140 pound but it's on a block so it won't need stretching but of course any decent watercolour paper will do. My colours today are cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber and Payne's grey and just two brushes from my range a number six and number twelve round. Now when I'm doing a line and wash I always like to sketch things out first with a pencil and this one is free to download from my website, link in the description below. Next I'm using a permanent waterproof black pen to sketch in my black lines. Nice and loose and wobbly, I don't want them to be too neat and precise. So this complete ink drawing took me about 20 minutes to finish, so to save you from dying from boredom, I'm going to speed up the film. So don't worry about leaving the odd gap here and there, or the odd miss line, because you want to take it away from looking too technical. Whoa, here we go. It'd be great if we really could draw this fast. And can you notice how I'm constantly changing the angle of my wrist, which helps drawing these straight lines that much more easier. So I'm making sure that the ink has totally dried, then I'm just rubbing out with a rubber eraser. Now, the only issue I might have is painting around those two little crosses, so just there I'm going to add a tiny little bit of masking fluid. Off we go, and just chucking in some areas of the sky, some clean water, then dropping in straight away some nice watery mixes of cobalt blue, but leaving the odd gap, a bit of splatting here and there, just keep that paint moving and just carefully paint around the domes. Ooh, mustn't forget about that little bit of sky through the gap here. And when that's dry, I'm coming in with an equal mix of Payne's Grey and Cobalt Blue for these distant hills. Just a nice simple flat wash. Now I'm using exactly the same colour for the sea, but I've just added in a tiny touch of Cadmium Yellow just to green it up slightly. And again, this wants to be quite a wet wash to help avoid any of those uncomfortable brush strokes. Mm -hmm. 
Also, when you compare the dark value of the distant hills in the reference photo to my painting, it's far, far too light. So, no problem, I can simply glaze another wash on top. Now, this is something that I often say to my students, that it's always better to paint things too light as you can always add another layer. But, unfortunately, you can't make a dark wash lighter. Right, so when all is totally dry, I'm painting a very light watery wash of yellow ochre over all the buildings, just to give a little slight warm yellow glow. Now, when you look at the original photo, it has that little touch of yellow in it. And remember what I said, don't come in too strong. You can always add another layer of yellow later when it's dry, if you think it's not dark enough. Now for those lovely domes and I'm using a 50-50 mix of cobalt blue and cerulean blue. And I'm really loading up the paint on the right hand side to create a shadow. And here just lifting out a highlight with a damp brush. And for the big dome here I'm painting in a very watery mix of the same colour. Then painting a much stronger consistency along the right hand side, letting it all blend in wet in wet. Same colour again here, this time with a fairly flat wash. Right, so when that's totally dried, I'm removing the masking fluid and then using my number six brush, coming back in with the same color for the shadow side on this little tower. So while I've got blue on my brush, why not paint in all the other things which are blue? Using the same colour again and my number six brush, some very subtle waves in the water here. And this brush is perfect for that, getting those lovely little tapered ends. Now for these little edge things around the tower, I'm using some burned humber. Now I'm not really sure what they are, but from the photo they look like they're possibly some sort of tiles. And when that's dry, just putting a few little details on top using the same colour. Now for these shadows, and I'm using a very watery mixture of burnt umber but dropping in a slightly darker value at the top. Now 
and it's all these shadows which will help to give it a real three-dimensional effect. And this is the cast shadow from the tower sneaking up the wall here. Right, so next I'm cooling down the colour of the shadow, this time making a 50-50 mix of the burnt umber with the cobalt blue. And again painting it in very pale and watery. Then just adding a little bit more cobalt blue in here and there just to get more contrast with the colour. Right, so clean water goes in first on these pillars so I can get a nice graduated blend from right to left. And picking up a bit of dry brush texture here by dragging my brush quickly across the texture of the paper. And I'm getting more cool and warm shadow grey colours just by simply adding in more and less of the cobalt blue. Next I want to create that old plaster wall effect so I'm using the dry brush technique again, a bit of splatting and dropping in clean water, again using the combination of those warm and cool greys. And just continuing on with all the shadows here and you can see I'm really letting those warm and cool greys mix on the paper. And a final third layer here on this end of the building just to really help to create that 3D effect and give that extra depth to the shadow. So now we need to let this totally dry so it's a perfect time for a short break and although my dry January is over I'm easing my way into having a drink again. Just, just, just a little tiny bit, no 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 stop, stop, stop. Right, just continuing to build up these shadows again using combinations of cool and warm greys. So let me tell you a little bit about Santorini. Well, it's a small island with an area of approximately 28 square miles and sits about 120 miles southeast of the Greek mainland. It is known for being the site of one of the largest volcanic eruptions in recorded history some 3,600 years ago. Now, it's been ranked as the world's top island by many travel magazines and websites, and tourism has brought a regular 2 million annual visitors. 
It also has a mythological connection, as some scholars have thought the island is in fact part of the lost city of Atlantis described in Plato's works from 420 BC. Anyway, there's no doubt it's a stunningly beautiful place, and although I've been to a few of the Greek islands, I've never been to Santorini, so it's definitely on my bucket list. Let's just paint in these bells with a little bit of Payne's Grey. And lifting out a little bit of light here with my number six brush and then dropping in a more concentrated mix on the right hand side for the shadow side. And then Payne's Grey again for a few little shadow details here and there. So I'm just suggesting that there's something here behind this gate. I'm not sure what it is. Could be another plant pot. Next for these terracotta pots and I'm just simply painting them in with burnt sienna but putting in a shadow side with some burnt umber directly in wet in wet. Now for a few shadow details with some Payne's Grey. Next for these plants here, I think they could be some sort of cactus and I'm using my normal green mix of Cadmium Yellow and Cobalt Blue. And for this darker green, I've just simply added in more cobalt blue into the mix. I think this one is definitely a spiky cactus. A round number six brush like this is just perfect for getting those little tapered ends to leaves. And why not add a little bit of burnt sienna into the wet wash to just add some more interest. So for this little screen thing here in the window, I don't want to put in every single hole, so I'm just putting in the odd one here and there. Next for this boulder sitting on top of the wall, and I'm just painting in with a nice wet wash of Payne's Grey.
Next, I'm using the old plastic card technique to scrape out some texture in the rock, but the wash still needs to be damp. Now, when that's totally dry, I'm coming back in with a very watery wash of burnt umber. perhaps a little more scraping with the plastic card. Right, so now all the colour work is basically finished. I'm now coming back in with my black pen just to bring out a few of these black lines. And again, I'm speeding up the whole process. got a sudden urge to start throwing some plates around. And now finally with some gooey white gouache straight from the tube for a few white highlights here and there. There we go, all done, and this one in about three hours. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. And remember, you can do it as a conventional watercolour if you don't want to do a line and wash. And as always, let those watercolour paints flow, enjoy the experience, make it your own, and as I always say, don't expect to paint a masterpiece every time. And <laughs> please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free, leave a comment, I do read every single one, unfortunately I haven't been able to reply to too many of them recently. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolor Wednesday. Where's my user? <laughs>